What happened to the Heat in Game 4? How is it possible an NBA team could only score one point in almost nine minutes of game time? Coming off a huge offensive game, you'd think Bam Adebayo would want to replicate that, but the issue with the offense is having non-spacers along the perimeter. P.J. Tucker simply will not shoot threes from the top or the wings. Allowing Robert Williams to present another deterrent for the drive, he should be taking this open shot, and he brings it down so Horford can just take his cookies. On the out-of-bounds play, they park Tucker again on the left wing when he should be in the corner. Struess comes around the handoff but doesn't want to shoot it at full speed going to his left and won't drive because Williams is again ignoring Tucker. Now Bam takes the open jumper and hits the back rim. We get back to the more serious issue with their offense, that poor spacing in the left corner. Normally, you'd see a player on the left wing and a player in the corner to space a defense out. Instead, the Heat consistently have a player in the corner and one right in front of him in a dunker spot. Jimmy turns the corner only to be greeted by Williams. Tucker is still trying to back up behind the line where the ball comes. There was almost no threat of a shot by Butler on the handoff, and instead of spacing to the left wing, Tucker cuts through the lane slowly, allowing his man to turn around and an extra set of hands to pressure Butler as he leaves the fadeaway short. It's not time to panic just yet, it's only a five-point deficit, and they get decent spacing around the floor to run a two-man game with Lowry and Tucker. While this is a relatively open shot, I can guarantee the Celtics are ecstatic to see Tucker shoot a floater from 13 feet away. Again, they do this poor spacing thing in the corner, which allows Tatum and Horford to zone this up on the weak side, ready to help. Derek White does a great job keeping glued to Struess in the pin down, and Jalen Brown can show his chest without any consequences because Lowry just stands still after passing it. More great White defense to get around the step up screen and into the air to contest this shot as Struess hits it off the back rim. It's time to get a little concerned as the lead is growing and the leprechauns in the old garden are starting to swirl around the rim. They almost get the spacing right by bringing Tucker to the corner while they run an empty side pick and roll. But look how close he is to Struess. This allows Williams to help into the lane, while White can essentially guard two players at once. Even still, Butler is going downhill, but is afraid to throw the lob because Time Lord is there and then exposes the ball so Horford can cleanly strip it. Good rotations until the shot fake lures Tatum out of the way, but look at the bad spacing in the corner again, which allows Horford to get a little bit closer to the lane just in time to pressure the drive, and with Butler cutting into the lane instead of spotting up to give Lowry a pass, he brings White right into the passing lane for the easy steal. While this could easily be blamed on a personnel issue, to win in the playoffs, the coaches also need to help put their players in the best positions to succeed. And I'm always advising coaches that they need an overarching goal for every interaction, which will help them keep their emotions under control and ensure positive outcomes. That's exactly what Noom does to help and support you to eat better and live a more healthy lifestyle. With daily bits of information to digest, they slowly help you rethink how you approach eating and exercise. And I've got to say, after a couple of weeks, I've lost some weight and have totally changed how I eat. We all have behavior chains that sometimes need to be broken, and Noom's focus on getting into good habits really helped me get into a rhythm of healthy eating and exercise. By logging every meal, weighing in every day, and having a real person who is trained in psychology, fitness, and nutrition to speak directly to, Noom keeps my overall goals in sight. I don't get upset if I have a bad day now, since Noom is there to remind me that there's plenty of room to be myself on this road, and I just need to get back on the path for the next meal. Start building better habits for healthier, long-term results by signing up for a free evaluation and a free 7-day trial at Noom.com slash bball. The Heat have Bam bring it up to the elbow, initiating with a back screen for Struess that forces a switch. Again, there is bad spacing in the corner on the right side, so Williams could get both feet in the lane with Brown zoning up that space. Lowry gets impatient and takes the one shot every defense is ecstatic about giving up, and now you can almost feel the nerves being frayed on the Heat. They almost get the spacing right on this high pick and roll, except inexplicably Tucker isn't in the corner. He does get there, Horford ignores him to help on the roll, and they get their first point after Bam splits the pair of free throws. They then run pistol action for Struess, with a pin down into a handoff, so he's going to his left because a quick catch and shoot is easier in this direction for righties. Great effort by White to get to him, and now you've got another player the defense is happy to see creating off the dribble. He misses the wide open pass to Tucker in the corner to shoot a heavily contested floater. 
They kept getting sideline out of bounds plays, and this one sees Lowry making an Iverson cut across the free throw line, forcing a mismatch along the way with Pritchard guarding Bam. But instead of quickly getting it to him, Lowry waits long enough for Horford to scram the guard out of there and take away the advantage. Lowry suddenly realizes there's no time on the shot clock and has to take another awful shot from the dreaded mid-range. This is the point Coach Spolstra would have put Tyler Hero in the game, someone who could fill it up from the outside and go to the basket. But alas, he's in street clothes on the bench, so they decided to attack Pritchard by forcing him on Butler. The problem is, this terrible spacing in the weak side corner lets Grant Williams easily scram Pritchard out of there and erase the advantage. They've got nothing to flow into, and it's astounding to me how often they rely on Max Struess to be a dribble drive artist. He totally gets fouled here by Pritchard, but the refs don't see it, and the Celtics are on the run again. Shell shocked, the Heat should just be trying to attack the basket and get fouls and free throws. Instead, they don't space the floor properly on the weak side for this inside ball screen. Grant Williams can dare Jimmy to shoot with a big lead, and he bricks the contested 16-footer. Gabe Vincent comes in and gets the right idea. Let's attack the basket and collapse the defense. But what is the spacing that's going on here on the weak side? Scared of getting his shot blocked by the much longer Tatum, Vincent tries to force a pass to Tucker and it gets deflected, blowing their chance in an easy layup. Vincent comes around the handoff, Tucker has no gravity which allows Horford to just stand there, and the one thing that bothers NBA shooters the most are contests from behind. The nightmare continued as they didn't seem to want to attack the damn rim. This is not good spacing again, and if they were happy to see Tucker shoot a 13-foot floater, they're thrilled beyond belief to watch Dwayne Dedman shoot one. With this lineup out there, who do you think should have the ball trying to attack strong to the basket? Well, he's just floating to the right corner to stand there and watch as they run a step-up screen for Gabe Vincent, who takes the worst shot in basketball, a pull-up right in front of the three-point line. And it took the Celtics screwing up the rotations by sending a triple team down low to Butler before Pritchard is way too slow recovering to his man as Victor Oladipo mercifully ends this crazy run. It seems clear to me that the Heat have had way more low points than the Celtics, and if Boston can stay reasonably healthy, they'll beat this team because the Heat's offense is both challenged because of personnel, but also by its own choice of spacing. Believe it or not, Jimmy Butler can be as much of a problem as he is an advantage. By not spacing the floor in the way modern offenses call for, he ends up allowing his man to get in the way of his teammates. And if you play him alongside Bam Adebayo and P.J. Tucker, you're going to see their offense have stretches of struggle like this. That said, after the first nine minutes of the game, the Heat were only outscored by six more points. But it was clear their spirit was broken from that embarrassing start. And I don't believe the Heat are going to be able to solve this before the series is over.